Hey, Michael DDA here. I'm so glad you're there. Or maybe you're here too. That's good. All right. Well, we are going to talk about the 70 that went down to Egypt. They are enumerated in Genesis 46. Uh, we're also going to talk about Jacob seeing Joseph after 22 years and the reunion that they're going to have together. I think you're going to find it very emotionally satisfying. I certainly do. Let's go ahead and get started. We saw the last thing we saw last week was the boys coming back to Jacob and oh, I don't want to be at 46. I want to be uh, coming back to Jacob and breaking the news that Joseph is alive for him without giving him a heart attack. And remember how they did it? They used sweet Sarah, uh, the little girl. Actually, I don't think she's as little as she was. She's probably in her 20s at this point. But uh, really delightful little little story about how she sang the, the, the song about Joseph is alive. Joseph is the king in Egypt. And she sung it once, she sang it twice, she sang it a third time, and it was like Jacob perked up. And so the last thing we saw was they were having a feast in Canaan in the midst of a uh What's it called when they're, when they, a famine, meets midst of the famine. Can you imagine? They're going to invite all the kings, all the rulers in Canaan that loved Joseph, that were friends with, with Jacob, rather, uh, friends with Jacob and his crew. And they all came to the feast. And it sounds like the feast was in Beersheba. I was surprised. I really kind of thought it was going to be in Haran or in, uh, uh, what's the name of it? Um, where Shem and Eber were hanging out, where Sarai died. I want to say Hebron. There it is. Hebron. Just had to pull it back into my mind here. Well, let's pick up. With uh, 46 right now, uh, this is a very interesting chapter. It's going to take us a while to get through. Um, I may tend to go a little bit longer today. We were a little bit shorter last week, so we're going to make up for it maybe today. Uh, so bear with me. There's interesting things that we need to see in here, and uh, it's fun to see who is enumerated and who's going down to Egypt. I think you're going to find it really interesting. It starts like this. Genesis 46, 1. So Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba. Well, maybe he was in Hebron. You know, listen, let me get to Yashar. And see if it says the same thing. I kind of thought he was in Hebron. and But this says he came to Be Be Beersheba. And it says offered sacrifices. Do you know that the scriptures want to make it all about religious things? I think it's to turn us away from certain things. It says, and offered sacrifices to Elohim, to the Elohim of his father, Isaac. It doesn't say offered sacrifices. What it actually says is slaughtered slaughters. They killed meat to eat. It was for the feast. 
that they were giving in the land of Canaan for all the people in the land of Canaan in the famine. This is it. But when we slaughter meat, just like halal, you know, they're slaughtering their meat to um, uh, I forget their name. I forget that name that they uh, the Muslim shoes. They slaughter meat to their Elohim. And maybe they're calling Yehovah that that name. Uh, I would like to think so. But we slaughter our meat to Yehovah. I don't eat meat, generally speaking, unless I slaughter it. It would be on rare occasions. I might have a taste now and then, but I don't eat meat that I don't slaughter. And I'd much rather raise it and then slaughter it. So I know where it's been. Look at how our meat has been polluted these days. Makes me think, oh, well, maybe that's part of the reason why Yehovah showed me not to eat meat that has been slaughtered away from myself. We slaughter our meat to Yehovah. That's what he's doing right here. And he's going to have a feast. And it was that nice. It says, then Elohim spoke to Israel. Isn't it interesting? Spoke to Israel. Then he says, Jacob, Jacob. Spoke to Israel in a vision of the night. Here, what it said in here was, um, in a night's vision, in the night's vision, in the night's. It had the definite article on night's, the night's vision. And said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Hineni, here I am. I always like that. So he said, I am. They said, God, I am God. I am God, the Elohim of your fathers. You know what it really says? And this is subtle. This is so subtle. This actually says, I am the Elohim, the Elohim. Here it is. The Elohim, thy father's Elohim. Can you see that there is a subtle difference between saying, I am God, the Elohim, the Elohim of thy father. It doesn't make Yehovah the Elohim. It makes him the Elohim of your father. So can other people have other Elohim? You see, it's subtle. It's subtle. This is very subtle. But by leaving out that definite article on the L, we lose the authority that the Elohim is speaking of when he says, I am the El, thy father's El, Elohim. Do you see it? Only one translation. It was the, the, um, Scriptures, 1998 plus, that said, I am the Elohim of your father. The El, Elohim of your father. Just the way I want to translate it. I'm saying it a little bit differently. But I'm but basically saying the same things, them and myself. It's what the, it's what the, what the Hebrew actually says. And I think it's important because he is the El. Other L's. He's the L. Your father's Elohim. That's where the emphasis has got to be on the L. All right. Well, you may see that. You may not see that. But it's very, very important. Do not fear. 
to go down to Egypt. I will make you a great nation there, a goyi, gadal, a great nation there. You know, you don't normally see goyi uh, used in conjunction with Israel. But it's nation, you know, understanding it as nations, nation, in this case, a great nation, he's going to make us a great nation there. Uh, four, I will go down, down, down. Why does it say down? Is it because it's south? If you go north, you're going, going up? I don't think so. Remember, when Judah took his first woman, we'll talk about her today, I think. He went down to that city, but that city was north. I think it's more of a is it jurisdiction? Is it leaving? It's 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 again, this is a very subtle thing. I will go down with you to Egypt. Is Egypt down? I think so. Israel's up. Egypt's down. And I will also surely bring you up. It says again, and in, in, uh, it's an added word. I will bring you up. Joseph will put his hands on your eyes. And remember, we're going to see it probably not next week, probably not the next week. Three weeks from now, we're going to see, either two weeks or three weeks from now, we're going to see uh, Jacob uh, pass and the wonderful ceremony that they have for Jacob when they bring him back to Israel. I will bring you up again. Joseph will put his hands on your eyes. What do we have here? Oh, uh, in fact... Uh, here it says, behold, I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go. I will bring you back to the land, bring you back to the land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Here's another one. My father made me swear, saying, behold, I am dying in my gra- dying in my grave, which I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. There you, this is Jacob speaking, there you shall bury me. Now, therefore, please let me go up and bury my father and I will come back. This is Joseph telling him what his father told him to Pharaoh and saying that he's going to come back. Anyway. Jacob's going to be buried at Machpelah. Machpelah. Uh, Nancy, your mic is open. Would you please close it? Thank you, baby. Uh, In 46.5, it says, Then Jacob arose from Beersheba. So they're leaving now Beersheba. Yeah, he must have been in Hebron. I guess, came to Beersheba, had this celebration, and now he's leaving Beersheba. It says, and Israel's seed took their father, Jacob, their little ones, their women, in the carts which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. It doesn't even say him. It says him. You would think it would say them, but it's really more about Jacob than anything else. And they took their livestock and their goods, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and went to Egypt, Jacob and all his descendants with him. You know, I was thinking... These are the these are the goods that Jacob has acquired since he's come 
from Haran till now. He, when Israel died, remember, he didn't get anything from Israel. He didn't get any goods. He didn't get any wealth. He didn't get any servants. He didn't get any cattle. Everything that Israel had went to his brother Esau. And so he's coming to Egypt with what he's accumulated through his life. And I'm sure there are many servants that he has uh, with him. We're going to enumerate the 70 today, but there's a lot more men and women that are coming to Egypt. This is a vast uh, crowd of people. Entourage. They took their livestock, their goods, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and went to Egypt. Jacob and his, it says, descendants. The word that they're using here is Jacob and his seed, his Zerah, his seed with him. And look what it says then. His sons and his sons' sons. But look also what it says. His daughters and his son's daughters, and all his seed he brought with him to Egypt. All his descendants. They use this, this word twice. It says his daughters and his son's daughters. How many daughters did Jacob have? We only know of one. I've often wondered if there's more than one daughter that Jacob had. Remember, when we talk about a woman, generally speaking, in Torah, she's not enumerated unless she's going to do something in particular. Diana was taken captive in Shechem. That may be why she's enumerated. But were there other daughters from four different women, or did they all have sons? Here's what I wrote. Yet Jacob only had one daughter, and neither Genesis or Yasher records the birth of a single daughter from his sons, from his sons. Did his sons only have males? Or were there females? Or were the females not recorded? It appears the former is more correct. But if that is the case, why count Sarah as an, why count Sarah an adopted daughter among the 70? Oh, there's so many questions that we have to ask ourselves as we go through this material. Do you remember? We're going to see where Sarah came from, but she's numbered among the 70. But it says daughter's twice, his daughters, his son's daughters. Were there other ladies, women, females in the entourage? that they don't mention. I think so. And all his descendants he brought with him to Egypt. All his seed, again, seed, 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 which he brought with him to Egypt. Now, these are the names of Israel's seed. B'nai Israel, Jacob's, and his Benim. And it does say his benim. That's what this is here. His benim. Israel's seed and his benim. Is it a different way of saying it? It may be. Who went to Egypt? Reuben was his firstborn. Bikara, I believe, is the name for that one. Uh, I don't need to look it up now. I don't want to waste your time. But here we are. Uh, uh, 
Oh, I guess I don't have Benet Rubin. Oh, no, this is just says Rubin was his first point. Here is where it says Benet Rubin. Here it is. And Benet Rubin, right here. This is and Rubin Seed. Rubin Seed. Who are Rubin Seed? It lists us for us. It lists them out for us. But keep in mind, when we read all these Numer enumerations of people, we are talking ultimately of Jacob's seed, B'nai Israel, Jacob's sons and their sons, Jacob's seed. So let's look at this carefully. Uh, they're going to enumerate them, and I think it's important that we keep track of who these guys are. B'nai Rubin, Kanak, Paru, Hezron, Karmi. Here on Yasher, I want to do the, kind of the same thing. I want you to see where these guys came from, and it also gives us a better idea on how they're saying them. Uh, look what it says. And it was at this time of year, which is the year of Joseph's going down to Egypt, so these boys, men, brothers of Joseph, were taking wives, it sounds like, right around the time that Joseph was going down to Egypt. I think that Judah was kind of ahead of the bunch. And there may have been some other ones who were ahead of the bunch. Which is which is the year of Joseph's going down to Egypt after his brother had after his brothers had told him that Reuben the son of Jacob went to Timnah and took for him a woman Timnah she's a Canaanite woman from uh, Aliurim the daughter of Avi the Canaanite and he came to her and Aliurim. Reuben's woman conceived and bare him Kanak, Palu, Ketzran, and Karmai, or Karmi. Four sons. And that's exactly what it says. Now we have Simeon. The son, it's of Simeon were Yamel. This is uh, this is ten. Oh, this is what we're reading right now. Um, the sons of Yamin were Yamel, Yamuel, Yamin, Okad, Yakin, 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 and Zokar, and Shaul, the son of the Canaanite. The Canaanites. Woman's son is what it says. The Canaanite woman's son, the son of the Canaanite woman. Canaanite woman's son. Now, here is in Yasher. I like Yasher because it tells the names of the ladies and where they came from. You know, I think that's important. Israel ultimately is supposed to take their wives from Israel. And there are some that have joined themselves to Israel, and that would be someone who is okay. I'm thinking about um, geez, I'm forgetting names today. Ruth was one that was a Moabite and came with her mother-in-law to Canaan and was joined to Richie Mary. I forget right offhand. An Israelite man. And he commented on her coming, leaving the kingdom of her birth and her family and joining herself to Israel. And I think that's what some of these people are doing. 
Uh, not all of them. I'm not sure that the last one we just talked about, uh, Simeon's woman did that. Or maybe it was Reuben's woman, I forget. Uh, we are on uh, Levi. It must have been Simeon's woman. So here's Simeon. It says, and Simeon, his brother, took his sister, Dinah, for a woman. And she bore him men, men, me, me, Memuel, Memuel. Yaman, Okad, Yachtan, Yachtan, and Zokar. I think they pronounce it and write it, alliterate it, probably a little bit better than New King James does here uh, from what we're reading here in Torah. That's the version that I usually teach from. And he afterwards came to Buna. The Canaanitish woman, the same Buna, when Simeon took, whom Simeon took captive from the city of Shechem. The Buna, and Buna was before Dinah and attended upon her. Oh, Sim just came in. Hi, Sim. I'm so glad to see you here, my friend. All right. I'm going to open your mic in case you have a question. All right. Who are we on? That was Levi. Buna was a concubine. She was a handmaid to Dinah just as Hagar was a handmaid to Sarai. Kind of the same situation. Uh, Levi. Look what it says about Levi. Levi, I'm reading on the right here, because it just says Levi's seed was Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. There's more to this story. And Levi and Ishakar went to the land of the east. And they took unto themselves for women the daughters of Yovab, the son of Yoktan, the son of Eber. Oh, isn't that interesting? They're getting some very, they're getting some women from some very righteous men, probably women who have been trained well in the ways of a woman in Yehovah's kingdom. You know what? We don't have that anymore. We don't even know what that means. We're blind. We raise our women to be men right now. It's so sad. But he had two daughters. Yovav, the daughters of Yovav, the son of Yoktan, the son of Eber. And Yovav, the son of Yoktan, had two daughters. The name of the elder was Adonah, and the name of the younger was Erida. And Levi took Adonah. And Ishakar took Arida. We're talking about Levi right now. At the bottom it says, And Adonah bear unto Levi, bear unto Levi. She's bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. She's bearing for him. Gershom. Kohath Marari. Look what it also says. You know, I can't tell you how many times in Yasher I've read something and then realized, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. And then look back for evidence of it in Torah and found it. It says, Gershom. Kohath and Marari. Three sons and their sister, Yokoved. Do you know who Yokoved is? Look at this next verse. This is in Numbers. And the name of Amram's wife was Yokoved, the daughter of Levi. You know what? You never see this 
when we look at the and Levi, the sons of Levi, where Gershon, Kohath, and Merari, it doesn't say, and their sister, look at that. Why? Well, there's a reason. Let's keep reading. So fun. Uh, I'm continuing down. Levi's daughter is not mentioned here because she was in the womb. She was not enumerated in the 70 souls. She was born in Egypt. Oh, I had a note. I think I got rid of it. I should have saved that note. Because it said that she was born in Egypt. Let me look to see if it's there. Uh, 15. Oh, this is 15. See now below on verse 15. This is, oh, no, that's not 15. This is 15. Oh, okay, here. Um, now Amram took Yochaved, his father's sister, for to himself, to himself, for himself, I'm going to say to himself, for a woman. And she bore him Aaron and Moses. The years of the life of Amram were such and such. Amram is the eldest son of Levi. No, the el, the young. I'm sorry. Uh, Amram is the eldest son of Kohath, the son of Levi. This is so very interesting. Uh, do we have something that says that she was born? Yes, here it is right here. The name of Amram's wife was Yogaved, the daughter of Levi. This is Numbers 26, 59. I guess we're just adding to the verse that we were reading earlier. But look what it says. Who was born to Levi in Egypt? And to Amram, she bore Aaron and Moses and their sister Miriam. Jochebed was born in Egypt. She had Moses. Moses was 80 years old. When we left Egypt, and yet many people believe erroneously because they haven't looked at line upon line, precept on precept, that we were in Egypt for 430 years. If we were in Egypt for 430 years, that means that she had to have Moses when she was. 350 years old. That's not the case. She was maybe 130-ish. 125-ish. We're going to find out. I've got it figured out later on when we talk about Yochaved in particular in Exodus. But do you see how the doctrines and traditions of men, because we take one verse... We say, well, they left Egypt after 430 years to the day. What day? From the day that they came into Egypt? No. We're looking at it from another day, and we don't know it. Turns out it was when Abraham was 70 years old back in Har Haran. Yeah, that was a long time ago. That's the 430 years, and I can prove it. We were in Egypt for 210 years. Well, these are things that we've got to see for ourselves. But this is Yochaved. She is not going to be enumerated because she's in uterus. Oh, very interesting. She was born after we got there. Well, let's move on. Remember, this was about... Levi and Ishikar. So we're going to see the same paragraph when we talk about Ishikar as well. 
we won't go through it quite as thoroughly. Uh, Levi, Judah, here's Judah. Sons of Judah were Ur, Onan, and Shelah, Perez, and Zerah. But Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. Yes, they did. And Perez's seed, this is, this is, um, Judah's eldest son from Tamar had Hezron and Kamuel. And on the right here, we've got a little bit about this. I'm not going to go read the whole story of Tamar, uh, but it's interesting here. This is 45 of uh, Yasher, Yasher 45.4. And Judah went to went at that time to Adullam, and he came to a man of Adullam, and his wife and his name was Hera. Hera. And Judah saw there a daughter of a man from Canaan, and her name was Aliat, the daughter of Shua. And he came to her, and, and he took her and came to her. And Aliad bear, bear unto Judah, Ur, On, and Shila. Well, later he took Tamar for his first son. He dumped the seed on the ground, didn't want to get her pregnant. No, Ur did that. And Ur died. Ur then took his brother's wife to raise up an heir for Ur. And Onan did exactly the same thing, and Yahovah killed him. Well, later, Aliat passes. And at the revolution of the year, Aliat, Judah's woman, died, and Judah was comforted for his wife. And after the death of Aliat, Judah went up to his friend Hira to Timnah to shear the sheep. And Tamar heard, remember Tamar, this was the whole story. Tamar sat down on the road, pretended to be a prostitute so she could get the seed that was on her. How did she know that he would take a, take a, a, a whore? She must have known him pretty well. Well, he did. And uh, they ended up with two sons, twins, Perez and Zara. Sons of Ishgar. Here we already did this one. Remember, we talked about Adonah and Ariah. This time we're talking about Ariah, who is going to be Ishgar's woman, and Ariah. I'm sorry, uh, Ar Ar Arida, uh, is bearing to Ishgar Tola. Here it is: Tola, Puva, Yov, and Shamron. They said Shimron, Shamron. Keep in mind. Uh, we're looking at primarily the consonants, uh, the vowels, when they're transliterated, they change words regularly. So you got to kind of deal with uh, the transliteration of these from Hebrew into English. That was Ishkar. Here's Zebulon. Sons of Zebulon were Zarad, Elan, and Yakliel, Yakliel, Yakliel. Uh, here it is. And Zebulon went to Midian and took for his woman Marisha, the daughter of Malad, the son of Abida, Avida, the son of Midian. Midian. He is Abraham's son through Keturah, another Potentially, you know, I always try not to say righteous women. There are no righteous women. Torah never talks about a righteous woman. These are women who are living according to their created purpose that came from a righteous man or belong to a righteous man. You could say it that way. And Marisha Bohr. To Zebulon, Sarad, Elan, and Yakiel. And there they are. Sarad, Elan, Yakiel. Now look what it says. 
these were Leah's seed. Leah's seed? Do women have seed? Well, they do if they're bone of a man's bone and flesh of a man's flesh. Their sons are their man's seed. So talking about it in this concept, it makes perfect sense. She bore to Jacob, uh, whom she bore to Jacob and Padamaran. That was Haran. That's where they had Padamaran is in, or Haran is in Padamaran. And look what it says. And these are Leah's seed. We're talking about men. And his daughter, Dinah. I think it's interesting. It says his daughter, Dinah. Not her daughter, Dinah. But again, it's not making her the seed. She's not seed. She's the sister of the seed or the daughter of the seed. You see what's going on? Now, look what also it does. All the souls, they say persons. The word here is nefesh. Here it is. Uh, where'd it go? Where am I? Uh, I know. What do I do here? So, uh, yeah, this is it. Uh, nefesh. Here's nefesh. No, you really can't see it. Look at this. There's the nefesh at the top of the screen. Persons or souls. These are the souls. Souls can, nefesh can be men or women. These are the souls. His sons, but look what it says, and his daughters. His sons and his daughters. What daughters are we talking about? This is the only daughter, Dana, Dinah, that's been mentioned. But this says sons and daughters. 33. Now, if you go through this, oh, uh, where would I put it? Uh, here, let me just read this. I only get 32. 32, not 33. And only see one daughter mentioned here. The 33rd may be Levi's daughter, Yokoved, conceived, but not yet born. Oh, I think that's really interesting as it relates to abortion. She was apparently counted in a sense, even though she was in uterus. Let's count them ourselves. I want you to see this and see how it fits together. We started with Simeon, Reuben. Here, Reuben, all the sons get counted and their seed and their son's seed if there are any. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Why do we have 31? I missed one. Let's count them again. Got to get 30. Oh, I know. 31. And Dinah is 32. There's 32. So Dinah's counted because she is her father's daughter. Not necessarily that all the daughters are counted. I think there may be other daughters. But she was counted. You know, in a sense, she was in here twice because she is Levi's woman. But she's counted because she is Jacob's daughter through Leah. So there's 32, not 33. Could the 33rd one be Yochaved? 
How would they know she was a woman? I don't know. It says daughters. These are all questions that we have to just ask ourselves because we don't always have answers. We can speculate, but we don't always have answers. I put, now Amram took Yochved, his father's Kohath's sister, to himself. Okay, we did that. Uh, the name of Amram's daughter. Uh, we've been through all that because we went, went from that to Levi down to 15. Uh, so let's continue. We're going to go now to Gad. Gad's seed were Zif, Zifian, Kagi, Shuni, Ezban, 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 Are, Aradad, and Arli. Arli. And here we have, again, these are going to be two daughters that are taken, and Gad and Naphtali. We haven't got to Naphtali yet. We, this is Gad. Gad and Naphtali went to Haran, look where they're going, and took from thence the daughters of Am, Amuran, the son of Uz, the son of Nahor. Remember, Nahor was Abraham's brother for their women. And these are the names of the daughters of Amuram. The name of the elder was Meramah, and the name of the younger was Uzit. And Naphtali took Meramah. Naphtali is who we're talking about. No, we're talking about Gad right now. Uh, Naphtali took Meramah, the name of the younger Uzith, uh, and Gad took Uzith and brought them to the land of Canaan to their father's house. Uh, drop down to the last part of verse 11. It says, Uzith bore Ziphion, Kagi, Shuni, Eshban, Ari, Arodi. Erodi and Arali, seven sons. Then we have the sons of Asher. Asher's seed were Jimna, Yimna, Yishva, Yishvi, Bari, Bara, Bari, 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 and Sarah, their sister. So we have the seed in green and their sister, Sarah. But this is an interesting one because she's an adopted sister. Yet she's going to be enumerated among the 70. Let's take a look at this. The sons of Asher were Yimna. Oh, I guess we got that. Uh, Sarah, their sister. Uh, were, okay, uh, that's the verse we just had. Sarah did not come from Jacob's body, his yarek. We're going to talk about what that means coming from his yarek. Among the 66 in Genesis 46, 26. Yet she's counted among them. Sarah was a stepchild to Asher. Here's how it went down. Yasher, 45, 12. And Asher went forth and took Adon, the daughter of Aflal, the son of Havad, Hadad, the son of Ishmael, son of Ishmael, Abraham's son through Hagar, for a woman. And he brought her to the land of Canaan. I like that the sons are taking, for the most part, righteous women. And Adon, Asher's woman, died in those days. She had no offspring. And it was after the death of Adon that Asher went to the other side of the river and took for a woman, Hadarah, the daughter of Avimael, the son of Eber, the son of Shem. Oh, isn't that interesting? And the young woman was 
of comely appearance. This is Hadara. And the woman of a, a woman of sense, and she had been the wife of Machiel, the son of Alam, the son of Shem. So she is a widow. Haran bare a daughter to Machiel and called his called her name Sarak. So this Sarak came from Hadra and another daddy besides Esher. And Machiel died after this, and Hadra went and remained in her father's house. Remember, a woman has to have a covering. This is why the woman goes back to her father's house, so she has a covering in her life. You know what? You don't see that these days. And after the death of the woman of Asher, he went and took Hadra for a woman and brought her to the land of Canaan. And Sarak, her daughter, he also brought with them. And she was three years old and a damsel. And the damsel was brought up in Jacob's house. The damsel was a comely, of comely appearance. She was as pretty as her mom. Yeah, her mom was of comely appearance, it said, verse 14. comely appearance, and she went in the sanctified ways of the sons of Jacob, of Jacob's seed, and she liked nothing, and Jehovah gave her wisdom and understanding, and Hadara, the wife of Asher, conceived and bare unto him Yimna, Yishva, Yishvi, and Beria, four sons. These were the sons of Zilpah, whom Laban gave to Leah, his daughter, and she bare to Jacob 16 persons. We got 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen! Counting an adopted daughter. There's a daughter. A daughter of a son. And it's not even one of Jacob's sons. It's Miguel's son. But he adopted her. And she went in the ways of Jacob's seed. So interesting. She's going to be numbered. The other son of Zilpah, oh, that was Asher, Gad and Asher. We got uh, 16 persons, 16 souls. Remember, we're talking about souls. Generally, things, when you say souls, we're talking about thoughts and emotions. Thoughts and emotions. In a sense, that's what makes up a person. Thoughts and emotions. That's a much deeper subject, but that's that's it. That's it in a nutshell. Uh, Rachel, Rachel's seed, Jacob's woman, were Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph in the land of Egypt, and to Joseph were born in the land of Egypt. Oh, here, let me do this first. Rachel is the only one who is called Jacob's woman. Isn't that interesting? They didn't call Leah Jacob's woman. What did they call Leah? Let's look. Nobody else is called Jacob's woman. Uh, Leah, 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 Leah. There she is. Whom she bore to Jacob. These were Leah's seed whom she bore to Jacob. That's it. All the persons who were born. Yeah, so now this one, it says. Where were we? Rachel, his daughter. Bilha. Here we are. These were the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob. Where were we reading? Rachel's called, oh, Jacob's woman. 
where she called Jacob's woman. These were the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob. They left it out. Isn't that interesting? Let's look at this. Oh, maybe I'm looking in the wrong spot here. Oh, here we are. Yeah. Jacob's woman, Jacob's wife, Jacob's woman. There it is. Uh, Isha Yaakov, Jacob's woman. Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph and to Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, whom Azanat, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of An, bore to him, bore for him. Two, four. It's the same thing. Four, for him. And Joseph in the land of Egypt was born Manasseh and Ephraim, whom Asnath, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bore to him. And the sons of Joseph were born to him in Egypt were two persons. That's the one we're going to read here in just a second. Um, the sons of Benjamin were ten. Bella, Beckham, Ashvel, Gera, Naaman. Uh, what would that one be? Sometimes they're easier to figure out here. Uh, Gera, Naaman, Aki, Aki, Bosh, Movim, Mobim, Kubim, Kubim, Kupim, and Ard, Ard. But these ten sons came from two wives. Look what it says. This is again Yasher. I love the information that we can get from Yasher. Jacob went to Aram, the son of Zobah, the son of Terah, and took for his son Benjamin. Kalia, the daughter of Aram, and she came to the land of Canaan, to the house of Yaakov. And Benjamin was 10 years old when he took Makalia, Makalia, the daughter of Aram, for a woman. Makalia conceived, there's the five sons. And Benjamin afterwards, afterward, went afterward and took a woman. Arabat, the daughter of Shamran, the son of Abraham, in addition to his first woman. I think that's a different Abraham. I don't think it's the same Abraham that we're normally thinking of. And he was 18 years old, and he was 18 years old. And Arabat bare to him the other five sons. Two women. First one when he was 10. Isn't that surprising? These are the sons. The, these are Rachel's seed who were born to Jacob, 14 persons in all. So if we have one, two, three, four, and 10 is 14. That's where they get the 14. But we're going to be talking about 66. So this is going to fit into our equation a little bit differently. we got to figure that out, too. So now we're going to talk about the sons of Bila, Dan and Naphtali. Uh, Dan's seed was Cushim. He only had one seed. And Dan went to the land of Moab and took for a wife, Aflaaf, Afla. Let, Aflalet, the daughter of Kamudan, the Moabite. And he brought her to the land of Canaan. That's interesting. She was a Moabite. And Aflalet was barren, and she did not have, she had no offspring. And Elohim afterwards remembered Aflalet, Dan's woman, and she conceived and bore a son and called his name Cushim. 
And then finally, we have Neftali. Neftali's seed were Yaziel, Guni, Yezer, and Shalem. And let's see what it says in here. And Gad and Neftali, oh, we talked about these guys already, uh, went to uh, a man who was a son of a grandson of Nahor to take wives. He took, Gad, Neftali took, Meramah, and Meramah, in verse 11, at the start, Ver unto Naphtali, Yaxziel, Guni, Yazer, and Shalem. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These were the, these were Bilhah's seed, whom Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter, and she bore to Jacob seven persons, seven souls in all. Now, it says, all the persons who went with Jacob went with Jacob to Egypt, who came from his Yarak. Yarak? What is a Yarak? Besides Jacob's sons' wives, they're not enumerated. The sons' wives aren't enumerated. Isn't that interesting? We're 66 persons in all, 66 souls in all. Now, remember Leah's seed said they had 32 or 33, yet we only counted 32. Zilpah had 16, Rachel had 11, Zilpah had 7. If we add the 32, not the 33, because there wasn't 33 counted, Yochavad was not counted in it. Yet with Zilpah, Zarah was counted in the 16. With Rachel, remember, Joseph and the two boys, they're already in Egypt, so they're not going to Egypt. They're already there, so they aren't, aren't counted. So we got 11. And then seven from Zilpah. That leaves the 66, which is correct. That's what we want to see, 66 persons. But I think it's interesting that it's not 33, 16, 11, and 7. It's 32, 16, 11, and 7. You follow what I'm saying? All these, you know, it takes a while to make all this stuff make sense. I've spent hours on these. It says it came from his Yarak. What is a Yarak? Oh, you know what? Before we do that, let me just talk about, remember, we've got, we've got 70 all together. So if we add from 66, we add the boys, Joseph and his two boys. We get 69. And last but not least, we got to add Jacob. He's the 70th, 70th one that is numbered among the 70 that are going down to Egypt. But Yarek. Oh, and look at this. This count does not include Leah, Rachel, Zilpah, Bilka, Bilha, or any of the sons' women except women, except Dinah, Levi's woman, who is also Jacob's daughter. So there are no wives that are counted in this number. Remember, bone of their bone, flesh of their flesh. They are he. They are them. They are the sons, wives. They are the sons, period. Yarek. What is a Yarek? Here, do you remember in Genesis, the servant, what was his name? Um, I'm not going to pull it out. Not right off hand. The servant put his hand under, it says, the thigh of Abraham. The Yarek of Abraham is what we're talking about. 3409. His master and swore to him concerning that matter. Eliezer was his name. And all the souls that came with Jacob 
into Egypt, which came from his loins, is Yarek, Jacob's son. Besides Jacob's son's women, all the souls were 66. Did Zara come from Jacob's loins? No, but yes, she's numbered. I just want you to see there are things that we need to take issue with. And all the souls, the nefesh that came from came out of Jacob, this is in Exodus 5, came out of the loins of Jacob, the Yarak of Jacob, were 70 souls. For Joseph was already in Egypt, was in Egypt, was in Egypt already. Yeah, even that is is questionable because there were 66 and Joseph and his two sons were in Egypt already. But loins, what is loins? Yarek. It's a euphemism. Well, here, Yarek, uh, this is the definition. Uh, what would this definition be? I don't remember. Uh, maybe it's Strong's. Yeah, this is, this is Strong's. Um, Unused rut meaning soft, the thigh, from the fleshy softness by euphemism, the generative parts. Yeah, this is his testicles. Just so we're clear, that's where the seed comes from is the testicles. Another euphemism, balls. That's where the seed comes from. That's the yarek that we're talking about, the soft spot. But again, Sarah was numbered, but she wasn't one of them. How does that work? I don't know. Now it says, and the sons of Joseph who were born to him in Egypt were two persons. So now we're doing Joseph's seed. That's why I added the three here, Joseph and his two sons, and then Jacob to get to get down to the 70. And Joseph, who were born to him in Egypt, were two persons, two souls. All the souls of the house of Jacob who went to Egypt were 70. That is correct. All the souls, not necessarily all the yuck. All the souls of, of the house of Jacob that went to Egypt were 70. Again, this does not count Leah, Zilpah, right? uh, Rachel, Bilhah, or any of the son's wives. Then he sent to Judah, then he sent Judah before him to Joseph. We're having a change in, in storyline here. To point out before him the way to Goshen. And they came to the land of Goshen. And Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet his father Israel. And he presented himself to him, fell on his neck, and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel, I put here, I put, uh, so Joseph made, made ready his chariot and went to Goshen. I said, just Joseph? Yasher says differently. We're going to read that here in just a second. So we're not going to talk about that. And Israel said to Joseph, let me now die since I have seen your face because you are still alive. You know, this Reunion doesn't touch me like the reunion that we're going to see in Yasher in just a couple minutes. I have seen your face because you are still alive. Then Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and say to him, my brothers and those of my father's house, who were in the land of Canaan had come to me. This is a large entourage. And the men are shepherds, for their occupation has been to feed livestock, and they have brought their flocks, their herds, and all they have. So it shall be when Pharaoh calls you and says, what is your occupation, that you shall say your servant's occupation has been with livestock from our youth, even till now, both we and also our fathers, that you may dwell in the land of Goshen. 
for every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. That's where we finished chapter 46. Now we're going to do a very short portion, 18 verses. I'm going to try to do it quickly. I'm sure we're going a little bit longer. And it came to pass, this is from uh, Yasher 55. And it came to pass after, after this that Jacob said, uh, this is Jacob saying, I will go and see my son, my son and in Egypt and will then come back to the land of Canaan of which Elohim had spoken unto Abraham, for I cannot leave the land of my birthplace. Jacob had full intentions, and we see that even in Yasher to some degree, uh, that Jacob was coming, up, planning on coming back right away. Yehovah had a different plan, and here it is. Behold, the word of Yehovah came to him saying, this is that night. This is what we were talking about in Yashur. The night's vision. Go down to Egypt with all your household and remain there. Fear not to go down to Egypt, for I will there make thee a great nation. Now, what, notice again, it's down to Egypt. And Jacob said within himself, he's speaking to himself. I will go and see my son, whether the fear of, go and see my son, whether the fear of Elohim is yet in his heart, amidst all the inhabitants of Egypt. I think this is interesting that he wants to see if the fear of Elohim is yet in his heart. Jacob is not interested in seeing the greatness of Jacob, his house, or all that he has. The only thing Jacob wants to know is whether the fear of Elohim is yet in his heart. There's a man of God who's concerned about the eternal being of his son, the spiritual progress of his son. And Yahweh said to Jacob, fear not. Look at it. He said it within his heart, and Yahovah is answering him right now. Fear not about Joseph, for he still remaineth in it remaineth, for he still remaineth his integrity to serve me as will seem good in thy sight. And Jacob rejoiced exceedingly concerning his son. At that time, Jacob, Jacob commanded his sons and household to go to Egypt, according to the word of Yehovah, unto him. And Jacob rose up with his sons and all his household, and he went out from the land of Canaan, from Beersheba with joy and gladness of heart, and they went to the land of Egypt. And it came to pass, when they came to Egypt, Jacob sent Judah before him to Joseph, that he might show him the situation in Egypt. And Judah did according to the word of his father, and he hastened and ran and came to Joseph. And they assigned for them a place in the land of Goshen, for all the household. And Judah returned and came unto came along the road to his father. And Joseph Joseph harnessed the chariot. This is now Joseph. Is he going to meet his father as he comes into Egypt? Torah had him going to Goshen and then meeting him there. I'm not sure which is happening. See if you can decipher it. I don't know. And Joseph harnessed his chariot and he assembled all his mighty men and his servants, and all the officers of Egypt, in order to go and meet his father Jacob. And Joseph mandate, mandated, and Joseph's mandate was proclaimed in Egypt, saying, all that do not go to meet Jacob shall die. Does this mean, and I think it does, that all the men of Egypt need to come with Joseph to meet his father. You know, Torah has Joseph coming to meet his father. I think there's more to the story. And the next day, Joseph went forth with all Egypt, a great and mighty host, all dressed in garments of fine linen and purple and with instruments of silver and gold and with instruments of war with them. Must have been quite a sight. 
And they all went to meet Jacob with all sorts of musical instruments, with drums, timbrels, strewing myrrh, and aloes all along the road. And they all went after this fashion, and the earth shook at their shouting. And all the women of Egypt went upon the roofs of Egypt. They're on the roofs of Egypt. Maybe they're watching the entourage from Joseph leave to the father, to, jo to Jacob. Could that be? Roofs of Egypt and upon all the walls to meet Jacob, to meet Jacob. As he's coming into the land of Goshen, would they meet him? Perhaps. And upon the head of Joseph was Pharaoh's regal crown. For Pharaoh had sent it unto him to put on at the time of his going to meet his father. And Joseph came within 50 cubits of his father, 75 feet. He alighted from the chariot and walked towards his father. And when all the officers of Egypt and her nobles saw that Joseph had gone on foot toward his father, they also alighted and walked on foot towards Jacob. And Jacob approached the camp of Joseph. That's what I think. It seems like Jacob's still on the road. Jacob approached the camp of Joseph. Jacob observed the camp that was coming towards him with Joseph. And it gratified him, and Jacob was astonished at it. Jacob observed the camp that was coming towards him with Joseph. Yeah, and it gratified him, and Jacob was astonished. And Jacob said unto Judah, Who is that man whom I see in the camp of Egypt dressed in kingly robes with a very red garment upon him? and a royal crown upon his head who has alighted from his chariot and is coming towards us. And Judah answered his father, saying, He is thy son, Joseph, the king. Oh, it puts chills down my body just reading these words. And Jacob rejoiced in seeing the glory of his son. And Joseph came nigh unto his father, and he bowed his bowed to his father, and all the men of the camp bowed to the ground with him before Jacob. Can you think all Egypt is bowing before Jacob? And behold, Jacob ran and hastened to his son Joseph and fell upon his neck. Jacob ran. This is Jacob. He's got new, new life in his body at the joy of seeing his son. Jacob ran and hastened to his son Joseph and fell upon his neck and kissed him and they wept. And Joseph also embraced his father and kissed him and they wept all the people of Egypt and, and they wept and all the people of Egypt wept with them. And Jacob said unto Joseph, now I will die cheerfully after I have seen thy face, that thou art still living and with glory. And Jacob's seed, and their women, their children, their servants, and all the household of Jacob wept exceedingly with Joseph. And they kissed, kissed him and wept greatly for him. They must have missed Joseph. You know, seeing somebody after they've been gone for so long, uh, I think is a very touching moment. They they realize how much they miss Joseph when they see him. And Joseph and all the people returned afterwards to Egypt. And Jacob and his sons and his, all his seed, all the children of his household, came with Joseph to Egypt. And Joseph placed them in the best part of Egypt, in the land of Goshen. Now, this makes it seem like Joseph saw them on the road, where Torah makes it sound like Joseph went to Goshen, where they already were at. Joseph and all his people returned afterwards home to Egypt, and Jacob and his sons and all their children and household came with 
Joseph came with Joseph to Egypt. And Joseph placed them in the best of Egypt, best part of Egypt in the land of Goshen. Well, we're going to stop here. Next week, Jacob is going to meet Pharaoh. Very interesting. I hope you are enjoying this as much as I'm enjoying this. I find it just fascinating. All right. Well, thanks for thank you for joining me today. We'll catch you again next time.